is coming into focus. Have you tried like, wearing your glasses? Hey everybody, welcome to another walkthrough. This week we're going to be going over reflection and refraction, the <coughs> particle nature of light, where we'll be looking at geometric optics as our evidence of the particle nature of light. I'd like to welcome Garrett this week to helping us out. He's going to be going over the theory and talking you through some of the concepts that we'll be using to explore the particle nature of light. But before we do that, let's talk about this week's pre-lab activity. In this week's pre-lab, what you'll be doing is a very straightforward process of looking at refraction and reflection with surfaces. What you want to look at is placing an object into a cup of water you want the cup of water to be fairly tall because what you want to look for is a disseparation of the object that's in the water and the image that we see coming out. And when you're straight on, you should see that it's fairly lined up. It just is, this is magnified because this is a curved surface. If you'd like to check the magnification, you can calculate the magnification by measuring the width of the pencil and then the, uh, the actual pencil and measuring the apparent width of the pencil in your eye. Then you rotate the pencil and cup. 90 degrees, at which point you should find that the light is maximum displaced because over here the curvature is so intense compared to the pencil and the light coming out of the front end that it has given the impression that the pencil is separated from the top and the bottom. Of course this is an optical illusion, but the entire point here is that this is due to the ray optics. So you take a picture of this in this form as well. Your final picture will be taking the picture from above and the idea here is that you will draw lines of light coming out and heading out towards your eye which is outside the cup. The idea there is to demonstrate the refraction of light. Finally, there's one last picture you want to take to complete your pre-lab demonstration and that is to go to a window of some sort, a nice flat surface or even the curvature of maybe the window of your car or somebody's car that has you, you have their permission to do this. And you want to take your image just so that you're looking at a reflection of light off the surface of glass which when you're looking straight at it you can see straight through but you want to be at an angle that's high enough that you can see the reflection like trees or street lights or whatever the case on the surface of the glass and that will demonstrate that light does bounce off of glass even though majority of it does go through the actual number is close to 96 percent of light passes through but about four percent reflects off uh, the very surface Excellent. Okay, so now that you've got an idea of how to do the pre-lab, let's go ahead and talk about the theory with Garrett. Garrett? Okay, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about the theory uh, behind reflection. And uh, for this particular experiment, we're going to be focusing on the particle-like uh, nature of light. Uh, and I just so happen to have a ball to help visualize uh, what's going on here. So the particle of light is going to follow all the basic laws of momentum that you've already learned. Uh, so for example, here in this diagram, if you have a particle of light come in at an angle, it will reflect off of this surface and it will uh, keep the exact same speed as it came in from due to the laws of momentum in collisions. The angle that the particle comes in is known as the angle of incidence uh, and that is measured with respect to this normal line which is perpendicular to the reflective surface. And then once it reflects off the surface, it will reflect off the exact same angle as the angle of incidence. And this angle is known as the angle of reflection. And in this case, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Okay, so now that you know some of the basics about uh, reflection, now we can talk about uh, how to draw ray diagrams. And ray diagrams uh, will help you uh, determine where your image is located. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the steps of uh, drawing a ray diagram for this example here. So in this case, you have here this yellow arrow right here is your object. And uh, the first step you're going to do is you're going to start at the top of your object and you're going to draw a line parallel to your principal axis. You're going to draw a line and it's going to collide with the mirror here. And because at the surface of the mirror is a flat surface, it will reflect off at an angle and it will travel through the focal point. Once you've drawn the first ray, once again you're going to start again at the top of your object and this time you're going to draw a new ray straight through the focal point and it will reflect off the mirror and it will reflect off parallel to your principal axis. Now you have one final ray to draw and once again you're going to start at the top of your object. 
This time you're going to go through a point known as C, which is known as the radius of curvature. And you're going to draw it straight through that line and it will reflect off the mirror and return straight back to where it came from. Now that you've drawn all your rays, you will see that they have all converged on one point. And that point is where your image will be. And so you can see that in this case, the top of your image is below your principal axis. And you will notice that the height of the image is different than the height of your object. And your image will appear uh, inverted as opposed to your object. You will notice that your image is at a different position from the center of the mirror. Uh, and that quantity is known as Q which is your image distance. And that is your distance from your image to the center of the mirror. And another important value here is P, and that is your, the distance from your object to the center of the mirror. And we will see how to use those values in a moment. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the theory of refraction now. And uh, again, we're gonna be focusing on the particle behavior of refraction. Uh, and I will say that uh, both reflection and refraction, uh, both can describe both the wave nature of light and the particle nature of light. So if we take a look at this diagram here, the first thing I will point out is that something that's very important with refraction is different mediums. So in this example, we could think of this empty area up here as air, and we could think of this blue area as uh, any other medium like glass, for example. And these two mediums will have a value known as n, uh, and n is known as the index of refraction. The index of refraction is defined as c, the speed of light in a vacuum, over v, the speed of light in a medium, which is always slower than c. And as a result, n is always greater than 1. All right, so in this case, we have our, we have our ball again, and uh, if we have a particle of light comes in, and it hits a, uh, hits a certain medium, in this case glass, uh, it will slow down and change its angle. And since it slows down, it has to come in towards our normal line. Uh, so therefore, the angle of incidence will not equal the angle of refraction. And there is a relationship between the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. And this is what is known as Snell's Law. And Snell's Law can be defined as the index of refraction of your first medium multiplied by the sine of the angle of incidence, which is equal to the index of refraction for your uh, second medium multiplied by the sine of the angle of refraction. So now we're going to uh, walk you through drawing a ray diagram for refraction. And uh, in this case, we here we have a convex lens. Uh, and the process is going to be very similar for uh, refraction as it was for reflection. Uh, so again, you, you have your object here. So you're going to start at the top of your object once again. And you're going to draw a line parallel with your principal axis. And that line will refract through the lens through your far focal point, or F2 in this case. And then for your second ray, you're going to again start at the top of your object. And this time you're going to go through uh, the focal point nearest to your object, or F1 in this case. You will come down and you will refract through the lens again. And this time your ray will go parallel to your principal axis. And then for your final ray, you're going to start at the top of your object. And you're going to go straight through your lens, straight through the center of your lens. Uh, you're going to just go straight all the way through. And then once again, you'll notice that all three lines have converged on one point, and that is where your image is going to be. Uh, and once again, you have your P, which is your object distance from the center of your lens, and you have Q, which is the distance from your image to the center of the lens, and you have here, you have HI, which is the height of your image. And up here, you have HO, which is the height of your object. And here we have uh, a couple of useful equations for lenses, both lenses and mirrors. Uh, so the first equation here is the magnification equation, and that is equal to the height of your image over the height of your object. Uh, and that is also equal to the negative of your uh, Q, which is your image distance, over P, which is your object distance. 
And the second equation we have here is uh, known as the Lensmaker equation, uh, and that is equal to the inverse of your focal point, and that is equal to the inverse of your object distance plus the inverse of your image distance. And I will say once again that these both of these equations work for both lenses and mirrors. You need to make sure that you check the tables for the, the sign regarding these two numbers. Excellent. Thank you very much, Garrett. That was a great explanation. Okay, so now that we're getting ready to get into the actual experiment, let's talk real quick about the lab report. The lab report is a worksheet style lab report, just like you've done in the previous semester, which means that as you did last semester, you'll take the worksheet that you've done in class. Then you prepare a one page uh, summary. Now on this page, we want to go a little bit beyond what we did last term. So what you'll do is you'll spend about a third of the page talking about the theory that uh, Garrett has gone over. And uh, just briefly mention it with some, uh, with some uh, context as, as we've done before for like an intro. And then for the rest of the page, you want to talk about your results. Don't just uh, submit the results and say, here they are. We want to talk about them. Did you demonstrate the particle nature of light? Did we show that light bounces off in reflection, in angle in and angle out? that uh, Snell's law applies for refraction, were you able to demonstrate focal points for uh, thin lenses? Make sure that you talk about any kind of errors that may have come up in the lab, anything that caused problems, just as we've done before. Remember, you want to zoom out and talk about was this lab viable, was this lab effective for determining uh, the theory that we put forth, which is that why life behaves like particles. <laughs> this week's laboratory, you'll be working with some optics which includes uh, reflective surfaces and refracting materials. The first object that we'll work it with is this three-sided triangular reflective mirror. One side is a flat mirror, perfectly flat. Side number two is a convex mirror, comes bending outward. And then the third one is called concave, where it bends inward. And one way to try and keep track of those is that for a concave surface, it's kind of like being inside of a cave. So it's got a curved inward uh, curvature. Our second object is a trapezoidal piece of plastic that light can pass through. And it has different surfaces with different angles that light can enter and interact slightly differently with the surface. Our last two are both lenses. They both have a curved surface that corresponds to a single curvature of radius for both sides. One is a convex thin lens, the other one is a concave thin lens. Finally, you'll be given a lens that has, is fitted in an optical mounting for the optics track. It's got a focal point already listed on it, and you'll use this to map out the location of an image that you are projecting with a source. So let's talk about the source. <clears throat> Here we have a light source that seems nondescript, kind of funky looking, but when you put power to it, it becomes a multifaceted light source. So you have a straightforward bright light source. On the flip side, there is a t uh, an object. This has, as you can see, grades on it that are millimeter markings that you can project and measure onto a screen, which will also be provided on the tr On the front side, there are four different possible options. You have a single slit. Similarly, you can look at three lines of light coming out or five lines of light coming out. And again, you can use these for ray optics analysis. You don't have to worry about, again, diffraction. The gaps between these far larger, multiple times larger than the wavelength of the light. And finally, as needed, if you need it, we've got the three color spectrum here. When we turn out the light, we can see if we switch to a single color, line up where the printed normal is on the paper, and you can make markings to trace out your incident and reflected beams. You can do that for the curved side, do the same thing for the flat side, and for the concave side. You can demonstrate refraction by simply having your line come in here and offset the outcoming line that demonstrates refraction through your block. If you try to do this with your thin lenses, it won't be quite as instructive because it mostly will demonstrate the reflective nature. So what you want to do in this case is switch to either three or five. I'm going to use five for clarity. But then you can put for your mirror, line it up and demonstrate that it can, uh, converges and what measure what that convergence is. That convergence, of course, will represent your focal point. Flat mirror surface, you can demonstrate that the lines come back out parallel. For your convex surface, you can again 
demonstrate that it diverges and then project backwards where your focal point is. For your diverging lens, you place it in place. You can see that the lines bend outward and you can trace those and project back where your convergence is. For your convex thin lens, you place that and you can see that it converges right at a focal point. And if you play with it, you have some gray area about where they actually meet. So make sure that you're careful about the alignment of your lens with the light that's incident on it. Finally, for your last step, you'll be given a, an object and a lens that has a given focal length. Your instructor will give you a location P for your object to place on the bench relative to your lens. Once you've got that in place, you will predict where the image will land. You make that calculation using the lens maker equation. You also predict the magnification. Once you find your image projected onto the white screen, you'll use that measurements of that Q to calculate your magnification. You'll use the values Q to uh, compare with your predicted values of Q and look at that using percent difference, not percent error in this case. You'll also measure the relative heights of your object and your image and use that to confirm your magnification and see what that percent difference is with your prediction. All right, great. Well, thanks again for joining for another walkthrough. I'd like to thank Garrett for joining us today and walking us through the theory. And if you have any questions about the theory, about the concepts, or about the wave and particle nature of light, make sure that you ask any one of us in the UTAs. Uh, make sure you take advantage of the Physics Help Center for, uh, for your homework. And uh, until next time, we'll see you in the lab. Do you know what cats like lasers? Do they? Wait, maybe, like maybe uh, green or... Red? Do you have a favorite? I don't think I care. Really? Oh shoot, I didn't put any of my, my frames up. Haha. <laughs> Good luck editing James. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so here in this example ray diagram we have a So here in this example ray diagram we have a concave mirror. And uh, we have a concave mirror, so dry, uh, we have a concave mirror here, so uh, drawing a ray diagram is uh, <laughs> I can't, I can't talk. So now I, I, I've noticed like whenever I do the outro, mm -hmm. the, the, my, my theme music starts to play. In my head. <laughs> All right. So. That's right. I'm taking a video of me cleaning my glasses. Lenses. Always check your optics. That is from Real Genius. The Val Kilmer. Great movie. 1984. Big popcorn scene. Check it out. Let me see if it's still going. Have my eye closed. Had actually my eye open. I should probably not talk while I'm doing this. <laughs> and that does it for this week's video. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Now that you've drawn all three rays, you'll be able to see that all of the rays have converted on one point. No. Uh, not converted. They no. come over to this side. <laughs> yeah. You'll notice that your object is at a... Uh, Different distance. <laughs> I cannot speak today. And as a result, n is always less than one. Right. Instead of less than one. Greater than one. <laughs> the candy man can cause he sprinkles it with love and makes the world taste good. We watched Willie Uncle the other day.